Hi, I'm Wayne Tuttle, and welcome to Chasing Legends. Welcome back to Chase and Legends. My name's Wayne Tuttle, and this week we're going to talk about a very good friend of ours, um, a fellow Dutch hunter who passed away recently by the name of Joe Roboto, and a kind of a nice story. A little of the background with Joe was uh, early on in the years of the rendezvous, Joe was uh, pretty much the camp host, he and his wife Carolyn, and Joe was probably the person that tried to inspire everyone to continually show up. So Joe was a huge part of um, getting the rendezvous off the ground and keeping the ball rolling for many years to come. Now, um, early on in the rendezvous, probably during the, I would think probably the second or third rendezvous, I went down and I started talking to Joe and we had a long conversation. In those days, um, Joe, who had spent a significant amount of the time with his family, his Uncle Chuck, in the superstitions and they'd spent a bit of time I know his uncle Chuck was up in uh, Needle Canyon and up by um, Black Mesa um, Blacktop Mesa in fact but uh, they spent a significant time in West Boulder and uh, that was an area he was really interested in at that time Joe was what we'd call or Frank would always refer to and a number of people do as a stony or a stoner which meant they were completely just into the stone maps the Peralta stone maps and uh, years later, uh, I don't think Joe was um, as tightly wound to that, but at the time he was. And while I would patiently listen to people with their stone map theories and their, and their ideas and, and what they had, uh, Joe had fully vested himself and spent a lot of discussion. I think a lot of people through forums and a number of people watch these probably not only knew Joe, but experienced some of the stories he had to tell probably in the early 2000s um, for a number of years. So this particular time at the rendezvous, um, Joe had come up and he wanted to kind of show everybody what he was talking about. I remember he had a laptop and he had a number of photos and maps and stuff and what he was doing. And uh, one of the things he did was he made these um, rectangular maps and he put them in like, um, um, what do you call it? I'm trying to remember, that's kind of sad. Joe put them <laughs> in a laminate <laughs> and they were laminated and one side was a topo map and the other side was kind of a topo map with an overlay of the stone map information and then certain directions and additions and information and clues that Joe felt fit that area. So I'm sitting there with Joe and, and um, Joe walked over and he gave me one of these. On the one side is a topo. Um, it shows the uh, area and the superstitions here. Um, it's the topo maps, I believe, of what you call the Weaver's Needle, Needle Canyon area, Bluff Springs Mountain, and then West Boulder Canyon. So there's a bit of an overlay of these two separate maps together. I think they might actually stop or cut off here. Here's Weaver's Needle. For anyone who needs any kind of pointers, this would be north. And this was what Joe had on the one side, um, which was the combination topo maps. On the other side, he had the trails listed in he had you know map one and map two of i think the different stones and then information and all the symbols and everything written in so you can see kind of very interesting well i know there's a bit of a glare there but it's very interesting um couple of maps he gave me so um i thanked joe very much and uh i believe i, w I was out that year with my dog jake so I took the map and I put it in my truck and uh, Sunday morning at the end of the rendezvous I was prepared to leave and uh, loaded everything up, thank Joe and everybody, and I went to take off and roll down the road. So I get rolling down the road and one of the things when you get an Apache Junction around and around, there's certain key points people would stop at. Uh, the Bluebird with Louie and John Wilbury. Um, if there were no clouds, it didn't look like rain, John might be out and about. Talk to John Wilbury. Um, and Louis Ruiz, who's always entertaining himself and um, has a number of um, political views that are sometimes um, 
interesting enough to listen to. Um, I'd pretty much seen everyone at the rendezvous, but might stop by and grab some, you know, fries or something or a burger or something at Cobbs, which that was a Dutch Hunter meeting place. Other one was Pro Mac Mining Supply. So that day, decided to pull into Pro Mac, kind of walk in, take a look around, see if there's anybody there. Sometimes there's guys who don't make out to the rendezvous and stuff. And you kind of say hello, say, hey guys, I didn't see you out there. So I pulled in. When I pulled up, took the map and I had it like this and I didn't want to leave it kind of in the gear and stuff so I had it sitting to the side rolled down the windows partially it was a beautiful day out nice cool weather um, took the map set it up on my dash and my Bronco and uh, just didn't think much of it went inside started talking to everybody can't remember who was there with me it might have been Randy Wright I don't know someone else was there though who had come in from the rendezvous we both ended up meeting up there I don't think it was Randy but somebody was might have been um, Larry Wright no relationship to Randy but someone was there and we were talking and we kind of kind of doubled a couple discussions and stuff looking around books and some stuff in there and as we're doing the discussion you know yeah. so then I finally decided you know okay I'm all done I probably spent 15 minutes in there so I go back out, get to my truck, I go get in, there's two guys standing there. And they're standing by the side of the driver's window, kind of, and they were looking up into my windshield. And I was kind of like, can I help you? Um, they turned, they kind of looked at me for a minute. And they said, that's an interesting map you got there. And I kind of looked over and thought, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not thinking, I think it's Joe just made this thing up. I just put it on the dash, I wasn't thinking much of it. They're nodding. And, How much you want for that map? And I'm thinking, I don't know. You know, Joe just gave that to me. I'm not giving it to somebody. It was a gift from Joe, and Joe's my friend. And so I wouldn't think of it. No, I'm, I'm just kind of starting to shake my head. And the guy says, "I'll give you twenty bucks for it." I was like, "No, I'm not taking." I was like, "That's a, fr a friend gave that to me." You know, the one guy just keeps looking at it. it. He's looking at it. He looks at the other guy. And the guy goes, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. And I'm thinking, I have for a moment there, I go, well, 50 bucks? Hmm. Covers my gas and stuff for the whole rendezvous this weekend and all. But, uh, you know, again, I'm thinking, you know, this is, um, how am I going to explain that to Joe? As I got to Pro Mac and some guy gave me 50 bucks for your laminate. So I'm sitting there. I'm just like, you know, guys, that was kind of a, a personal gift and uh, you know I, I'm, I'm like I really I, I really can't sell it I said you know he, he took some time putting that together and I don't know if he put any others together because I hadn't seen any so I didn't know if he handed those out to other people which I had no problem with if he did but I was like I, I really can't you know my friend gave that to me uh, I, I just can't give that away or, you know, hand it off for just, you know, 50 bucks or anything. I, you know, and I didn't realize what I was saying. I meant, like, I just can't give it away, period. And they both looked at each other. and They both kind of look over at it for a minute. And I'm, I'm starting to walk around them just to get in the truck because I'm just thinking I'm done. And the guy turns to me and he goes, I'll tell you what. He looks at his friend. His friend and him look at each other. He nods. He goes, I'll give you 100 bucks for it. He says, I'd really like that. And I'm just like, you know, I just can't. I'm really sorry. And, and he, he just shakes his head and he's looking at it. And I, I, I said, I, I'm, I'm just really sorry, you know. I said, it, it's kind of, it's from a friend. And it was, I consider it kind of a gift from a good friend. And I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to take it home. And, and to this day, I still have it. I, I keep, I always know where it's at. It's one of those few things I always simply seem to know where it's at. Um, but I've always meant because to frame the one side and frame it and put it up. Because it has a sentimental value that you just can't pass up. And guy looks at me and just goes, 100 bucks. And I'm like, no. And he took a pen and a piece of paper. He had a little, little notepad and he wrote I can't remember what his name is because I actually sorry to say I crumpled up the name and the number and and threw it down in the truck at once I got inside but he wrote his name and number down and said if you if you change your mind you give me a call 100 bucks any any day I'm like okay whatever so I took it got in the truck crumpled it up once I got out of the parking lot tossed it down turned to Jake you know I was like eh, you know bud 
it wasn't worth it, you know. Joe gave me that map. All right, Trevor, here we are for the last piece of that segment. So I get home and, uh, you know, thinking on the way home, crazy story. But a week or so later, I called Joe and we would talk over some different stuff. I always like to hear some of the stories he had. And, um, Joe sometimes had the rumor, the gossip, the Dutch hunting community through some people he got. And, I'd know some stuff locally or stuff going on with people and we would kind of, it wasn't so much sharing information but catching each other up on what was going on. And uh, we were talking and I told them, I said, these guys came up and I said, they offered me 20 bucks, they pushed it, they got up to 100 bucks for that laminate and Joe was like, you crazy ass of you. Um, should have sold it. I would have given you another one. And I'm thinking, Joe, but you gave me this man. It's kind of, you're my friend. And I kind of, it's kind of, I thought it was more of a, you know, a personal gift type thing. And Joe's like, take the hundred bucks. And I said, well, I threw the number out. Joe's like, you're an idiot. So he said, you should have sold that thing. That would have been such an easy hundred bucks. It didn't, you know, who cares? And at that time I thought about Joe, send me five more. Maybe I can make, make some money back on this deal. So that, that was the story of Joe Roboto's laminated topo map. Very cool, still have the map. I take very good care of it. I should probably frame it and put it up somewhere now that Joe's passed. And it, it, it was, you know, something I've held on to for many, many years. Um, Joe was kind of a one of a kind kind of character. Um, everybody, there, a lot of people didn't know him. Thought he was a bit of the pot stir. He always was stirring the pot, starting things up. But at the same time, if, if, if Joe was wrong, he would call you because he always made sure anyone he really interacted with on the internet or whatnot, he got your phone number, he'd message, but he got to know you. And I think everyone would men say is that if Joe was wrong, one of the things you would get is a phone call. And Joe would call you. He wouldn't email you, wouldn't message you. He'd call you and then he'd say, you know what? I'm sorry about that. I want to apologize. I was wrong, and I had that all wrong. And I want, and I got a number of times he did that when he kind of busted, busted my balls on something, and then he realized he wasn't quite right. And uh, that was something that was always important. If Joe, if Joe was wrong, or he found out he was wrong about something, he always came back on stuff. Uh, but he was such a big supporter, um, such a big part of getting the Rendezvous moving off the ground and going early on. If it wasn't for him, Ron Feldman and uh, Greg Davis and a lot of what they put in and what we were able to do, along with all the many guest speakers and all the support we got from people like Tom Colomborn, it would have never happened. But Joe was such a huge fixture and a part of that. And uh, though the last number of years he's kind of made it, made it here and there to some of the rendezvous, it was always great to see him. Uh, he will be always a big part of that as we come through. So. Um, you know, Faya Candios, our friend, and uh, we hope to see you again someday. But uh, yeah, your memory, the memories of your friendship and everything always stay with us, Joe. So you will be sorely missed by all of us. And we always will have a lot of great stories, but a lot of fun stories to say about you. So um, farewell, my friend. So wrapping it up, um, Lust for Gold got moved to spring of 2021, and we posted the thing about that, and we kind of put that around. They will be putting some content out going leading up to that, and that's unfortunate with the COVID thing. Um, there is news in the pipeline um, with History Channel, some stuff coming up. So you won't you won't have to go through an entire fall without any superstition mountain lore coming out to you on um, film or television. There will be something, but we'll get more to that as it, it's, it's kind of coming and it's getting itself up because we get those non-disclosure agreements we always got to deal with. But besides all that, go to represent.com, check out our shirts. We got them in the black with um, the black with the white lettering. Now we got the gray with the black. The things look awesome. Very comfortable, durable, excellent shirts. We're not really making a dime off that. So it's just for anybody out there who wants to be stylish and look cool and um, have something that represents the channel and everything we do. Um, in other news, I'm definitely um, the rendezvous at this point, we're saying we're moving forward regardless of what we'll do, why we may have to change, make a number of changes or whatnot. As of the other day, the National Forest um, was shut down. The Peralta Road entrance is barricaded up. 
and the Don's Camp is located in the wilderness area in the National Forest. So I will have to check on access in that. Um, hopefully cooler weather's coming and the cooler weather means restrictions will open up and the Don's Camp will open up. If something else changes, we will find something locally or find some other way to, since we're so close, basically a month out um, because it's kind of so late, we will find some way to put the events and put things kind of in place somewhere, somehow. Um, at this time, we're still kind of looking at the Don's camp. I haven't got word from either the Don's of Arizona or anyone else. Um, that that looks like it's a no-go, but if it does become, we'll have more information. We'll release it here and we'll release it through the Legends page of Facebook and everywhere else in the sources we can. For those people coming on in, we, we will find some way to accommodate and kind of keep things rolling. Be a shame this year after 16, 17 years just to stop suddenly and put in a pause. Um, as far as rescheduling, I'm near impossible. You have the election, you have Veterans Day, you have Thanksgiving, going into Christmas with the holidays, everything that comes after, it would be near impossible to schedule anything in or get anything workable for everybody. So we will kind of stay two things and we will figure things out. Um, <clears throat> subscribe up to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and uh, leave a comment, any comment. We're always more than happy to hear from all of you. So thanks for this week sticking through Chasing Legends. We will catch you next week here, all right? Take care.